So, welcome to today's lesson. So, today we are going to solve a question, alright? So, if you could recall, in our previous video, we had this question and we solved the A part. So, in this video, we try to solve the B part of the question. So, the A part, so we had these two system of second order ordinary differential equations. And the A part said we should convert it to a system of first order ODEs. And the B part said we should determine the stability of the fixed point at the origin. So we did this. Now we are coming to do this. So we are coming to determine the stability of the fixed point at the origin. So let's go through. So we know that all these are the solution for the first one. All right, so with our B. So this causing the stability at the origin. So you should know that after reducing or converting our system of second order ODs to a system of first order ODs, we had four equations. So we had equation one here, equation two here, equation three here, and equation four here. Right. So what we do is that we let f be this, g be this, h be this, and um i be this. But we should know that we have functions of x, y, x2, x3, and x4. Alright? So that means that the fixed point at the origin, since we have four different values, is going to be s1 star, s2 star, s3 star, s4 star will be 0, 0, 0, 0. So our f of x1, x2 up to x4 will be s2, that of g will be this, that of h will be this, and that of i will be this. Know that we made this um, notation from here. So this is our j, this is our um, this is our f, j, h, and i. Right. So that's what you can see here. Right. This is nothing new. Right. So since we have four systems here or four equations here, that means that our Jacobi matrix is going to be a four by four matrix. So that's what you can see here. So the partial derivative of y with respect to x1, sorry, the partial derivative of f with respect to x1, f with respect to x2, f with respect to x3, f with respect to x4, and we had the rest as you can see here. And the fixed points are s1 star, s2 star, s3 star, and s4 star. <coughs> so the next thing for us to do is to find the partial derivatives of these functions as we have here, with respect to the x's. Which I know we can all do it. So finding the first derivative with respect to of f with respect to x1, x3, and x4 both gives you zero. It is only with respect to x2 which gives you one. So finding with respect to j, you also have this here. So you can just have a look at these because I know we can all find partial derivatives from our multi clause class. So that's of h also gives us this. And out of i gives us this. So after finding power partial derivatives and making a representation, we are going to have this Jacobi matrix here. Alright? And the next thing for us to do is to find the eigenvalues of this Jacobi matrix and based on it, we determine the stability of the system. Okay, so you see we have this matrix here. But the truth is that finding the determinants, the the eigenvalues of because the eigenvalues is just the determinant of g minus lambda i, where i is the identity matrix. Finding the eigenvalues here of this g matrix is going to be very, very difficult. <clears throat> so we have to make some row swaps and column swaps to make it quite simple for us. So, for instance, if you decide to just use this matrix and find the eigenvalues, you are going to go through a whole lot of processes, like you can see here. And at the end of it, you are going to have this particular characteristic equation, which will be very difficult for you to find the values of lambda. You get it. And so we introduce a plan B. And the plan B has been discussed here. So know that there is our Jacobi matrix J here. So what we do is that we try to simplify our J to put it in the simplest form, which will make it very simple for us to find for our again values. So we are coming to do column swaps and row swaps, okay? So we first swap column one and column two. So know that this is column one, <coughs> column one, and this is column two. So we swap both of them. So when you swap column one and column two, then we have this um, 
matrix here, then after that we swap column 3 and 4. So now that this is column 3 and this is column 4. So we swap them. After swapping them, we get something like this. And after that we swap root 2 and root 3. So this is root 2, this is root 3. We swap them. So after swapping root 2 and root 3, we get something like this. And next thing is that we swap column 2 and column 3. So this is column 2, this is column 3. So after swapping column 2 and column 3, we get the system here, which makes it very simple. So finding the eigenvalues of this system here is going to be very simple. So it's the same G, which we have been able to do some manipulations to put into this form. And to let you know that the manipulation that we did is mathematically correct, let me show you something here. So if you remember from your numerical analysis class that when you have A and you find determinants of A, Determinant of A is the same as negative 1 i plus j times determinant of A. Where the i plus j here is just the total number of rows and column swaps. So I made some illustration here for you, which is not part of the question. So for instance, when you have A to be this, if you find the determinant of A, it is 4. So when you decide to swap row 2 and row 3, you're going to get something like this, right? So you realize that when you swap, when you find the determinant of this a here, you now get negative 4 because you realize that the formula is negative 1 i plus j. And now the i plus j here is 1. So negative 1 times 1 is what? Negative 1. So it will be negative 1 times 4, which gives you negative 4. So here, so we did two swaps. You realize that we still had what? 4. So you could see that here, when we're starting with our swap, we did one swap here. We did the second one here. We did the third one here. And this was the fourth one. So minus one i plus j will be equal to minus one for our four, which is the same as one. So that means that the determinant of our new matrix here is the same as the old one that we had. Do you get it? Yes. So that means now we find the Determinant of j minus lambda i to find our eigenvalues, and in doing so, we are going to have this as we have here. So we subtract lambda from the diagonal entries. So that means we are going to have this matrix as you can see here. The next thing is to find for the determinant of this four by four matrix. So when you take the first row, so y minus lambda, then we have this as our new system three by three matrix. You know. Since this place is 0, 0, 0, everything will go away. So we're going to have minus 1, 1 minus lambda times everything here. Then we still have to simplify this further to a 2 by 2 matrix. So we take this entry, and since this and this are 0, the new 2 by 2 matrix is going to be this here. So it's 1 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda. Then we have this system here. So you see, we've been able to reduce this system to make it very simple for us. So 1 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda will give us y minus lambda squared. Then this will be this times this minus this times this, which will give us whatever we have here. So this means that this is equal, the whole of this is equal to 0, or the whole of this is equal to 0. So solving this, 1 minus lambda all squared equals 0. That means our lambda is plus or minus 1. Then we come to solve this. So then we have to expand whatever we have here. So when we expand everything here, we are going to get this. But we have minus k squared there, which is here. So you realize that this and this here goes to zero. So we'll be left with this now. So we try to factorize. So we get lambda squared plus lambda. So you see lambda 2k plus what 2w naught. Then we get our constant here. So have you seen that this here is of the form a squared plus b c plus b a squared sorry the same as s squared plus let me see a s squared plus b x plus c equals zero that's a quadratic equation where our a is one our b is whatever we have here and our c is whatever we have here so to find our lambda we can use the almighty formula or the quadratic formula which is giving us lambda 3 will be equals to negative b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So now this is our b, right? 
is our b squared and is our 4ac. So doing this um, computation here is going to give you negative k minus w naught as we can see here and this will give you plus or minus so when you expand this you're going to get everything that we have here when you do this you are going to get this you realize that this and this goes to zero and this and this also goes to zero so we are just left with this and i'm going to give us lambda 3 4 will be equal to whatever we have here plus or minus root of 4k squared over 2. so you see root of 4k squared will give you 2k so that's what you have here so 2k over 2 will give you k so that means you get lambda 3 4 will finally be equal to whatever we have here that's negative k minus w naught plus or minus k so when we have positive here that means lambda 3 will be equal to negative k minus w naught plus k which will give us just negative w naught so this will be lambda 3 and lambda 4 is going to be when we have minus here so when you compute this you're going to get your lambda 4 to be negative 2k minus w naught you get it so now we need to find for our four argument values and our argument values are lambda 1 is 1 lambda 2 is negative 1 lambda 3 is negative w naught and lambda 4 is negative 2k minus w naught all right so based on the argument values we have to discuss the stability we realize that here we are going to use make every influence on um every decision that we are going to make is going to be based on the values for <coughs> this two here all right so we say when our lambda i'm sorry our w naught is equal to zero we realize that we are going to have lambda theory to be zero and we know that from the hartmann government's theorem when any of our argument values are zero we can't discuss the stability because the fixed points are no more hyperbolic so we say when our lambda um, w naught is equal to zero then we can't discuss the stability but when our w naught is not equal to zero that means that we are going to have a value here and we are also going to have a value here irrespective of the value for k you have a value here all right so you realize that our values are going to be a mixture of positive and negative values because we have positive and negative here so irrespective of the values here we still have a mixture of negative and positive values so as a result of that when our w naught is not equal to zero we are going to have a saddle point so our system will be unstable i hope you get it so <clears throat> that is how to discuss the stability of the question thank you very much